This is a photo with me shot with a smartphone and everything is in focus. But if you want to blur the background and make it more interesting, let me show you how to do it easily using Photoshop. Step number one is to isolate the subject on a separate layer. And I'm going to do this in a simple way this time with the quick selection tool. I press W on the keyboard and then I click up here on select subject. In my case, it did a pretty good job with this, but if you have a more complex background, you'll need to use other tools to make the selection. But when I zoom in, as you can see, the selection is not really perfect, so I will grab the lasso tool and I just refine my selection manually. I add to the existing selection holding down shift, and then here, above my head, I want to subtract this small piece of my hair. So in this case, I'm holding the Alt key while I'm circling the areas that I want to subtract. I'm using the same procedure on my hoodie, on my arm, and boots, and for this area, I'm not going to do anything because this part will be in focus. The place where I'm touching the ground will be in focus. So the next step is to click on Select and Mask up here, choose the black and white view because I want to see my selected area properly. For this image, I will add a 20% contrast to sharpen the edges of the selection, and then I'm going to choose New Layer with Layer Mask as the output. Here we go, I have a second layer now with the layer mask on it, so if I hide the background layer, you can see that everything is cut out. Actually, it's hidden except me. Okay, the next step is to click once on the layer mask while holding down Control on the keyboard to reload the selection. I will disable this layer at the moment, and what I want to do right now is to cut the subject out from this image, but in the same time, let Photoshop fill in that space using artificial intelligence. So first let's expand the selection, because it will work better when I use the Content Aware field. So I'm going to click on Select, Modify, Expand. And for this specific image, I will use 5 pixels. The idea here is that you want to create some room for Photoshop to work better when using the Content Aware fill. It will create a better result. So I hit OK, and then I go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. Now, by default, in this case, you can see that Photoshop does a good job with this by filling the area with similar pixels from the surroundings. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. And this area doesn't bother me at all, because here, everything will be in focus. So I just simply choose OK, and I have a nice background to work with. To deselect, I press Ctrl plus D, and now I have the background ready, and I can also unhide the layer with the subject. So the next step is to apply a nice gradual blur on the background. But before this, I want to convert this layer into a smart object. This will allow me to work non-destructively when I add an effect to it. So right-click on the background layer, choose Convert to Smart Object, and then I go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and I choose this one called Tilt Shift. If you didn't use this effect before, it basically allows you to simulate a depth of field effect, just like on a normal camera. You can see these lines here, everything between them will represent the area that will be in focus. My focus should be exactly in the area where I'm touching the ground, so I'm going to grab the center of this effect and place it down here. There's also a dashed line here, and this will be the point where the blur effect reaches the maximum value. So it starts gradually from this line until up here. You can see that if I change the position of the dashed line and bring it lower, the effect is more intense in this area, so I need to move it somewhere close to the upper third of the image to create a smoother transition. And you can control the intensity of the blur using this slider. It's up to you what value you choose for your image. Obviously, this is exaggerated a bit, so I'm going to bring it down to 20. Now I can press OK, and the blur was applied. And of course, because I have the background layer listed as a smart object, I can always double-click the effect if I want to change anything, and go to the slider, change the value of the blur, and then hit OK. And I can do this over and over again. That's the benefit of using a smart object. Keep in mind that there's a wrong way to do it as well, and I recommend you to avoid that. Let's say, for example, that you skip the step with the Content Aware field. So you have the original image and the second layer with the subject only. If you apply the blur effect, you will end up having this horrible halo effect around your subject. I don't think you like it. If I compare the two results, it's so clear to me that spending the time to take out the subject from the background with the help of the Content Aware fill 
creates a more realistic final result. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up and make sure you watch another video from the screen. I'm Chris, catch you in the next one.